Hi, welcome to the Arrow Game Framework. This is a framework designed for the Roblox platform and is really built to address one central issue. And that issue is communication. Communication both between your code in general, but also between the server and client models. If you've ever done Roblox game development, you know that you had to fiddle around with remote functions and remote events a lot. Uh, this framework just deals with that for you, so you never have to worry about it. So in this introduction, I just want to discuss how to install the framework into your game. And in the further videos, we're going to talk about how to actually use the framework. What you see here is the GitHub page for the framework. So all the code is open sourced and available from here. Uh, you are free to contribute to this code if you want to, as well as report bug issues. And there's also some simple documentation showed here too. So, in order to get started, the first thing we need to do is install the plugin for Studio. So the link to that is here on, uh, on the GitHub page, and that will direct you to here. And once you install that, open up Studio, open your game, and you're going to see these three new buttons as plugins. This is the Framework button, the Code button, and the Installer. So if we just try to open the framework right now, it's just going to say, oh, it's not installed, which is good, that's the case and we can open the installer from here or we can click it from here. So let's install the framework right away. So open the installer, it's gonna show like this, just click install. Um, by default, it's not gonna work. If we click it, it's gonna say HTTP requests are not enabled, so we need to enable that first. So we're gonna to go to the game settings, options, turn that on. Now, if you don't want HTTP request on for your game when it's actually running, uh, make sure to turn this off once you install the plugin or the framework. So open up the installer again and click install, and now it's going to fetch all the files. All right, and now it's done. And as you noticed, uh, on the left side, uh, the install message went away, and now we have a custom hierarchy. Now if we open this up, we're just going to see some built-in modules that come with the framework. And the idea here is that this is your code base. This is where you're going to actually write your code and create new modules and stuff like that. And again, in the later videos, we're going to actually just discuss how to use this uh, more in, in detail. Now, this does actually exist within your game. So if we go to the Explorer, we're going to see these files here and there. Um, they're going to be under arrow folders. Uh, but ideally, you shouldn't have to worry about them. You know, if you're working in the Explorer and you see these arrow folders, just, just try not to touch them and everything should be fine. You can edit all the files through here and that's the preferred method. Now, all these items in white text are source code modules. So for instance, we double click it, it'll actually open up. And this is kind of where we're gonna edit our code and everything. Now, the framework also has a code viewer right here. So this is just a helper, uh, helper widget. So for instance, if we click our event module right here, it's actually going to show the source code for that module. This is really useful. So for instance, if we're editing the event uh, script here and we want to know how the fade module works, maybe we're utilizing it within this, uh, we can actually just select it here and it's going to show up within our code viewer and we can view the code, see how it works. And so that's just a helper, helper widget there for, for anyone to use. And that, that's pretty much it for the framework uh, when it comes to installation. Now for updating, it's the same process. You'd click the installer and click install again, and it will uh, show, uh, and it will install every, uh, every new thing that needs to come in or whatever. Now, if there's a change to a file, um, it'll actually prompt you if you want to change that file. And the reason it does that is maybe some of these built-in modules you wanna change. So maybe the data service has uh, a method that you wanna add, and so you add a method to it, well, when you run the installer again, you don't want your changes to go away. So it's actually going to prompt you if there's any changes. Um, and you may want to bring in those changes because there's new updates or whatever, uh, but maybe not. So again, it will actually tell you. And so for instance, we can just uh, demonstrate that really quick. So maybe we change our scope here to player data 2. Um, now if we run the installer, it's going to prompt us and say, hey, these items seem to have updates, you know, the, the source doesn't match up. Do you want to update them? So by default, they're all going to be selected. We can deselect, select it, whatever. Let's say we want to, you know, revert it back. So we click update 
And if we go back to here, we'll see that it now says player data again. So again, that's how you're gonna bring in new changes from the framework, but also can determine what you wanna change, what you wanna keep the same. All right, and like I said before, the following videos after this are going to discuss how to actually use this framework and write code for it.